Don't forget to subscribe and to hit the bell to get our latest notifications. With me this morning, um, I am in Vienna. He is in Zurich, Josh Kern, CEO of Breitling. Welcome, Josh. Thank you very much for the invitation. Hi, Alexander. <laughs> Uh, it's a funny way to talk. I've never talked to you through uh, um, an online media. We always met and we used to meet. Um, so things change our lives a little bit. And uh, you are the CEO of, uh, of a huge uh, Swiss and famous watch manufacturer called Breitling. You have, uh, if I'm correctly informed, 1,500 people working for you. Can you just explain me a little bit how it is to be in that position these days? I think it must be frightening and challenging the same time uh, first also to to react on the fact that we talk um, through video conference you know I've never got so many jokes <laughs> um, uh, on my whatsapp on the coronavirus uh, um, and and one of the questions was who is really influencing uh, the dig digital transformation is it the CEO your COO or COVID-19 and of course, it's COVID-19. And I think it will be a milestone uh, in, in the digital transformation. I don't think you will ever be able to argue with an employee, oh, we don't do home office or we don't do video conferences. So I think this will have a phenomenal um, influence on how we're going to interact together. I think people will travel less. People will do more of these conferences. And, and, um, and it has... A, it's amazing to see how quickly I would say the world has adapted to these tools, which took years and suddenly overnight everybody is using these tools. So that's <laughs> not number one. If, if, if McKinsey would have said to do it, they would have said, okay, uh, not with us. <laughs> so the, the second question is, uh, uh, of course, you, you have a uh, responsibility for your for your people and the only objective i think any entrepreneur or um anybody in this business has is to to keep the workforce uh, i've never fired in my life um uh people of course i fired when people were not competent or wh whatsoever but not because of of um an economic meltdown or because of mistakes or whatever you always try to keep especially i think people in switzerland in particular have a great sense of responsibility um we have a very low or until now at least we had a very low unemployment rate because people are responsible um and and uh, i don't i i hope and i and i pray that nothing what is happening today will ultimately impact uh, the colleagues uh, I have at Brightling. And so can you just in a few words or a few sentences better explain how you work as a CEO these days with uh, your company? Uh, the company is uh, on the one hand side producing, then you have the administration, the marketing departments, all these people. How are they working these days? How is it possible to keep let's say production and communication, yeah. everything alive. Um, so, it, well, um, in Switzerland, so if I take Switzerland, we have different uh, locations, but basically everybody who can is in home office, all the marketing teams, the digital teams, you know, engineers, et cetera, et cetera. Um, we have uh, closed the manufacturing center for three weeks. So people were in, in part-time, and um, uh, as you know, in, in Switzerland and Germany, many countries, you, you can compensate this part-time with government subsidies, uh, which is not possible in some other countries. Um, we have now started to reopen our manufacturing center in, um, in La Chaux-de-Fonds on Monday. Uh, we work now at 50% um, for, uh, and we concentrate on producing the, the novelties. And we decided to go to 50% to, to, to move up gradually depending on the opening of the countries. You know, China is open, thank God, Austria, which is the most important country for us in the world, uh, Alexander, will be open uh, uh, in, in a couple of weeks. So depending no, no, on... We are, we're opening on Monday, yeah? After oh, you, we're we, opening we, on Monday, so we need to... We're starting, we're starting partially, yeah? We're, yeah, so we need to dramatically improve and increase our production for Austria. 
Uh, and so it's it's one part incre increasing the production depending on the country's opening and on the other side, keeping the security and the distancing in our manufacturing center in order to avoid uh, uh, any any problems, health problems. Of course, the health of our employees and colleagues are uh, the, the, the most important thing. But I think we've really separated departments. We have separated uh, production lines, etc. We work in shifts in order to avoid any problem. And if there is a problem, we can uh, people can go in quarantine and others can come to work. I see. Um, you have a long-term experience in the industry, of course, um, coming from IWC, then being also the one of the CEOs of Richemont, um, now with Breitling. There is a supply chain. Um, you cannot produce everything for yourself so you need suppliers how quick do you think all the suppliers in switzerland will be fit and ready to deliver everything the manufacturers need then to finally assemble and and finish all the watches yeah. because if one piece is missing you know there's no watch oh. even if it's a piece that is yeah. worth some centi money well uh, thank god we are we're not in the in the in the car uh, industry in the in the automotive industry where you have huge supply chain problems also from china etc um we uh, we are, are we were able to to talk to our suppliers a couple of many suppliers are open in switzerland huh, by the way even though they of, of course they have dramatically reduced their uh production but they're open and um we have agreements with them to ship to us what is necessary for us to ship the novelties mm -hmm. um so we have no problem at this thank god um to, and touch wood at this moment in time in terms of supply chain to basically uh, assemble as you said uh, our products that's good news and thanks for the insights by the way now you were talking uh, several times about the novelties uh George, uh be so kind and uh, for my audience uh, worldwide audience uh, looking probably the video later then um what is new at Brighting? I've seen some first novelties coming out. Uh, the top time, the Zorro watch, very beautiful one, but I think that's not the only thing you have in your yeah. pipeline. No, I mean, first of all, I think what I, I, I wanted to say is, I think it's important to stay in contact with your customer base. I think uh, um, it's important also to cheer them up with beautiful products and to continue to share the passion uh, we have, our colleagues, our watchmakers, our designers, our engineers have on the watch industry and to share it with all the watch lovers out, out there. I think there's no need even in a, in a, in a, in a, in a unique situation as uh, of today just to cut um, communication, etc. That's number one. And number two, I think what is important to consider is, and we have seen it after SARS, we have seen it after um, you know, the financial crisis, um, people are, are eager to, to buy products, to, um, to try at least to, to come to normal uh, state of, of mind. And, and I'm convinced that people uh, will continue to buy uh, luxury products. So we, some people might have postponed it for a period of time, but I think the purchasing uh, will come back as soon as they feel at ease as soon as the stores like in Austria will reopen again etc so I'm confident that this will happen and I think if, especially in a, in a situation like this where the, the world is slowing down in speed where people also in future I guess will travel less you know we will you will you you will do more conferences the, the whole world will slow down a little bit for months I think to come um, I'm, I'm not sure that people will go on holidays now this summer. Uh, people will stay at home, etc. Or, uh, you know, French people will stay in France, Italian in Italy, etc. You will have less tourism. Uh, so I think uh, having a traditional product uh, 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 with craftsmanship, with human people being behind the bench and assembling this product and selling such a dream, I think, uh, will will even help the analog uh, uh, watch industry more um, than, in, especially also in a digital world, people will want to have these kind of, uh, of products. So uh, on many layers, I think it is important to continue to work, to share our passion, to, to work on, on, on a new products. Um, of course, volumes might decrease for a couple of months, but probably we'll be able to catch up. 
if uh, if uh, if uh, if uh, governments will be able to you know to deal with the situation and and therefore we decided to con continue to to uh, to do what we are best at meaning uh, beautiful products so we have three major uh, new lines of products coming out one which is the icon of the icon uh, at Brighton, which was basically the first product um, Alan Schneider did. Uh, by the way, at that time in the in the, in the uh, um, uh, quartz crisis, to um, to come with a chronograph, which was very unique in terms of design, and 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 to uh, to to I think it's very important for us to relaunch that product. Then we have um, obviously something important for us which is um the navitama 35 which is but, but you should have, you should have named it the chronomat i i, I, did I, I didn't it, didn't i say that i'm sorry no so no no, no, you were, sorry. no we were talking about the iconic it was uh, so iconic. so so obvious so obvious oh. for me that i forgot to 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 mention it is the chronomat of course it is a chronomat yeah, yeah. sorry Thank I just you put that uh, when I'm not looking into your eyes, I'm looking on my screen, so it's not to be unpolite. But I'm opening the pictures you sent me, and I really I get goosebumps because this remembers me of the time when I, when these when the watch came. Yeah, out. I wear it. I wear it. I, I'm changing it. I ah, wear it. Here great. I'm 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 wearing uh, the copper dial, uh, and and actually it's really what we really took in, in inspiration. Uh, from the uh, chronomat of uh, the, 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 the beginning of, of the 80s with the most famous Hulot, uh, uh strap here. So what is important, a couple of things we wanted to do is, first of all, it's a, it's a, it's a metal watch. So it's not on leather or on, on, uh, on uh, rubber. It's really a metal watch, um, so steel on steel or steel on on uh, bicolor uh, or gold, um, and and uh, that is very important also to simplify uh, the collection. The second thing is we have one size, which is forty two millimeter, but I show you the product. You know, it has a very flat case, like uh, in the old days. You don't have the lugs which have an angle so it's a flat case it's very particular to this design of uh, of that watch and the beauty and you see it here with uh, the bracelet is it fits every type of wrist so the the, the comfort for the wearer is quite uh, amazing and you have here this uh, buckle you you can close and you have a fine adjustment where you can uh, where you can reduce by two links or by one link. The comfort and the I would say the touch is quite amazing. Um, and and uh, I think the strength of that product is the case in combination with the bracelet, and that makes it a unique. And of course, this type of products um, in terms of the design language are absolutely uh, unique unique and recognizable and it perfectly fits our i would say design culture or design uh, overarching um mantra which is modern retro we want to be modern but we want to have an anchor in the past and that product perfectly fits fits it the last thing i wanted to say on that product it's for it's an all purpose product the beauty of this product, it is sporty and elegant. You can wear it with a tuxedo, you can wear it on the beach, you can wear it out, outdoor, and you have very few products on the market which fit um, that, um, that purpose being um, all purpose, basically. And I think that is one of the, the biggest uh, strengths of this. Uh, is it powered by the in-house? Yeah, it's uh, a B01. Yeah. B01, okay. So there's only one version with a B01. There's not a version yeah. available with an alternative program. Yeah. <clears throat> you know, the, the problem, and I always said that in the past, was that um, the collection was, was not readable anymore. The Avenger looked very much like the Chronoma, like the Code, etc. Um, and, and it was a blurred image. And, and when we relaunched the Avenger, you remember a couple of months ago, we said, okay, it's a very sporty, um, aviation product, military look, um, and, and a tough, like a hammer. Okay. 
Uh, and here, what we wanted to do is to have a different design and separate these lines again, the Avenger uh, from, from the Chronomat and from the Colt, and to have, if you want, a more elegant, sports elegant uh, product like, uh, uh, like a Bentley. So you have the hammer and you have the Bentley if you want. And it's very different. It's both sporty, but one more extreme than the other. Very nice looking. Anyhow, Doug, thank you for that presentation where you really showed um, the, 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 the bracelet. Uh, it's fantastic to see it back on the market, to have it back on the market and to see how really it's, it's, it's perfectly, yeah, it's, it's amazing. Yeah. I, yeah, I literally, the, can, feel, I literally and, can feel it without touching it, you know? Yeah. And I, also the finishing, you have satin finish and you have here links in, uh, in, in polished execution. So bezel is, is polished. And what is also important, you can, like the original Konomat, exchange the riders. So you can have 12, uh, let me turn it in the right way. Yeah. 12, 15, 30, and 45. But you can change these riders to have a countdown or a count up depending on how you use the watch so it's either for you know uh, for racing you have the toughy meter um, uh, or you can have you know you, you, you can use it also for regattas if you have a, uh, another function so this is why we call it not only in terms of style but also in terms of functionality an all-purpose watch is it you doing it, or you need to go to the uh, to, a, no. to a retailer? I mean, we we strongly recommend that you go to to see your retailers. I mean, you have a screw, uh, and you can do it, uh, of course. Here, like this was really one of the features of the past, but we strongly recommend in order not to scratch the case that either you do it when you buy the product with your retailers, or if you change your mind and you want to change the function, you can you can go see him. Wonderful. I like it. And I, I really literally feel that smoothness of that, that, uh, that uh, bracelet already. Uh, I, didn't, I didn't touch it, but I, I, I can literally feel it, how smooth it is. It fits on, on your wrist later. Yeah. Uh, do you want to talk also about uh, uh, one of the other collections uh, you of are presenting? Uh, uh, what about the uh, Super Ocean Heritage? I, I got some really amazing pictures here. And... Uh, I, I firstly couldn't believe when I saw them, so it's really... So oh, this is a product and, um, and uh, you know when I, by the way, another of my Austrian friends, when I went to see uh, Fred Mandelbaum, who is uh, my consultant and you know this huge collector in, uh, in uh, Vienna, uh, basically um, just a week or a couple of weeks after I joined uh, Brightling, I saw all these products like also by the way the top time and this uh, product which has a particular concave um, bezel and i've never seen in my life when i saw these hundreds of pieces on the table so many beautiful products and um, and that day we, we we with my my product team and design team we choose you know 20 30 of these products, we said, oh my God, we have such a history, we have so many roots, we have, there are so many beautiful products, and the world should know about this. And um, many people have this last 20 years in mind, you know, the bigger, bulkier, polished watches, etc. But writing was always more than that. And, and here you have another example. As you know, the first um, uh, capsule collection we launched was the civil aviation capsule collection on the Navitamer with the Pan Am, the Swiss Air, and the TWA. And this here is, in a way, the second capsule collection in different executions uh, with blue dial, with black dial, and with a bicolor case also. Um, and this, uh, the whole story telling around this will be the beginning of the surfing, you know, that the super ocean and the Super Ocean Heritage are linked to our surf squads with Kelly Slater uh, and, 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 and Sally Fitzgibbons, etc. And, uh, and here what we wanted to do, and here we are. Uh, <laughs> is, is, I, I had to change the background. You talk about it, surfing. <laughs> exactly. And here we are. And you remember uh, the, the beginning of surfing and, and, uh, and the, the image and the coolness around that. 
Um, and, and but here it will be the 50s, the 60s, the Beach Boys music. You should put now the Beach Boys music on, 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 on the screen. And and this is what we are going to use as a storytelling for. Um, and we have a great ambassador, one of the top surfers of that time, who will support us in in the launch. And since you have been very col colorful, uh, my dear Alex, here is the Rainbow Edition. So you see the different colors, you know, the orange, the blue, the yellow. And what is quite amazing with this line is you can combine it with our colored econil straps. So you can put here, and it's beautiful, uh, a blue or a, a green uh, natto straps uh, with our econil. And it's, it's, it's quite amazing and unique as a, as a product. But this product is, all, is limited to 250 pieces. And the combination uh, is free to you. You buy it with uh, you buy it with a leather, or you buy it with uh, one of the NATO straps. So, so you choose actually, you choose, or you have to no, add on something. No, you have to you have to add on because okay. you, you have to add on. Actually, what we're going to have uh, is is um, also the metal strap, uh, but a little later in September. And as you know, we've tried to be um, faithful to the past. So it's a very flat case. It's a very flat case. It's, uh, I think, 41 uh, millimeters. And, uh, and you, you, we've changed and we reworked the mesh strap. In the old mesh strap, or the existing mesh strap with the existing Super Ocean, you have a straight uh, integration into the case, while here it's round. The new one will be flatter. Or the new one, or the one fitting that product of the 1950s, will be flatter, and the attachment is round. It's beautiful, and um, it's it's. Uh, but we will have it only in uh, in September. That's a pity, huh? September. It's the watch that. Yeah, but this one be. on leather and on the on the econil straps will be available uh, in May. I see. Um, Fantastic move! Uh, I'm, I'm just I'm just looking forward to show these pictures uh, to 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 my audience. Uh, whilst we are recording it already, I have them here on the screen. There are some executions you sent you sent me in the in the folder I got uh, from Romy um, that are amazing. The combinations of strap, uh, color of the dial, and the watch really looks very good. Fantastic product, I have to say. Didn't expect this, honestly. Yeah. <laughs> um, there's one last thing um, you also are targeting, of course. This is uh, uh, logical uh, women, and uh, there is the uh, Navi Timer Automatic uh, 35 collection. Um, that in the beginning, uh, a lot of people were suspicious if this would work because it's kind of a Navi Timer and not a Navi Timer. But obviously, uh, the demand and the response on the market yeah. uh, seem to be good. No, very good. So we started with the 38 millimeter, which which is a kind of unisex uh, execution. Then we launched the 41 uh, as as clearly as a man size, and now we have the 35. The, let me give you a couple of details on that product. So first of all, 35 is a great size because visually it also has this concave look so you have a, gr a wide opening of the uh, of the case and of the dial and and the bezel the bezel is this famous navi timer pearl bezel uh, you know from the 60s and uh, now here we we work on the size of of the pearls etc to make it to make it uh, look feminine obviously so the pearls are smaller and to make it look very distinguished nobody in the market has such a design still we wanted to keep the sportivity of the navi timer so you have the printings on the um, uh, on the dial on the on the reo uh, with some functions so it's a sports elegant watch um, what is also uh, uh, which fits perfectly well any type of wrist and what is also very important is that we are bringing back many bicolor executions of so case and metal bracelet bicolor executions this was lost a little bit in the last years but when you look at our executions here they're absolutely uh, beautiful so we have fantastic um i would say 
meta executions with beautiful as scripts. Here we have full metal executions, be it in steel or bicolor or all gold. Sometimes we have diamonds on uh, on the dial, so you have a wide. Uh, we have Mars of pearl. We have a wide a variety of pieces, and I think considering the success right what people uh, forget, you know, in the late 1990s, writing was huge with the galactic in particular in the ladies market, and you will see now uh, finally more ladies lines, and we will start with the Navi Tamas 35, but there will be more surprises uh, during uh, the course of the year, but also. The, uh, I would say that um, this rainbow, even though it's a 41 millimeter, the rainbow is a, a, with a, a colored strap is a very much a beautiful females, uh, females execution. And remember the, the old days, you know, when, when Cartier did the Pacha, it turned to become a, a, a females uh, a product. So we don't know how it will evolve, but I think uh, we have with now the Super Ocean, with the Navi timer, with these type of products already, we're starting really to have a um, sporty and, and, and sports elegance female line. But you're staying with five and gold if you combine uh, gold yeah, yeah. and rose gold, you uh, rose gold, yeah, yeah. Rose five and you don't go to yellow gold because I, I see several, uh, several now restarting with yellow. I think it's a little bit brutal. The, the contrast in between white and this, this yellow is brutal. I don't know how you share you share my I, thoughts. I, I, I lived the period many years back when people changed from yellow gold to rose gold. I think it's warmer. It, it reflects more. I think also the society, I, I think it's, it's, it's more stylish. Um, you have more copper, you know, in the, uh, uh, in, in the metal. And um, for me, it's much nicer personally. And we have no intention at that moment in time to move into yellow gold. Let me ask uh, uh, a question. All the watches are continuing to be chronometer certified yes. and you still continue to have your five years warranty on all the products? On our in-house movements. On the in-house movements. In -house movements, yes. Five okay. Years. Okay. But uh, everything is chronometer certified. You were, yes. Breitling was at the, at the time being the first company to really 100% uh, uh, yes. uh, being tested by the cost can you continue everything yes. is going to make it with yes okay, I, see. I see okay um if people want to buy online are you ready to do so uh absolutely so we will uh as you know we've i mean first of all before I mean, in, in in two years ago writing was not really digital it was not a, a very digital company uh, neither in the way we communicated through digital channels, social medias, etc. Neither, of course, on uh, on uh, uh, through ecom. So we have now launched our uh, ecom platforms in Asia and in the US, and we're going to have most of the countries by June um, on our uh, through our ecom. So you will in June go be able to buy basically more or less worldwide. Uh, um, Brightling on the Brightling website. What we're doing now also is is working um, uh, really hand in hand with our retailers to allow them to get access to our assets. For instance, the ones you've received now, the pictures, the videos, etc. And and these and our partners will of course use these assets on their social media and will be able and we will support them to increase their sales, uh, their online sales. Last question. Um, you also started blockchain. Um, what is, for someone who, re who reads the note or gets the information, Breitling and blockchain, what's happening there? I think that's the future anyway for any product um, in the next 10, 20 years. Uh, it will um, apply to any industry, any product. You will be able to know through the blockchain uh, from that shirt where the cotton was produced, where um, the shirt was made in which manufacturing uh, uh, center in the world, uh, when it was shipped, where. So you will know the, um, the the source of the products. You will know when it went into stock, etc., etc. So people, there will be total transparency 
um, I would say, on the raw material and on the production process uh, of, of any of your products. And you have this in, in food. People want to know, okay, where is this coffee coming from? Where are these, uh, these vegetables coming from? Ultimately, to understand how sustainable the production is and how the carbon, uh, carbon footprint is. So this, I'm convinced, and you have some products, um, this will come over the next 10, 20 years, I think, in any industry for any product. But you have to start somewhere. So what we have done, we have created, for different reasons, now a blockchain in order for a customer to understand who was the owner of that product, when was that product serviced, um, in, in order to, to, to follow the life, if you want, of the product. So it's all digital. Uh, so you have a database where you can have access to your guarantee, where you have access to your instruction leaflets, etc., etc., and where you can follow the life of your product. So is it a gray market product or did I buy uh, that product from Alexander Linz, for instance, who was the first owner, etc., etc. So you need also for luxury products, I think, a transparency as you have with cars, you have also clear understanding, you know, when, you, when your car was sold, is it first hand, second hand, etc. All this information is necessary to have, uh, I think, uh, also in the future. So not only the supply chain, which is very difficult because we cannot say, uh, and we don't know when we buy the gold from a bank, where the gold comes from. But in the future, this will happen. What we've started now is the first step, is okay from the day of purchase who owned the watch when was it serviced uh, when was it sold it's uh, sold etc etc and i think this is the future very interesting i think also the aspect you mentioned if it's if the product sustainable or not will be a very a question that many young people today who are just Absolutely. at the university or school your, your future clients will probably ask and i think it's a very good uh way to say okay the product is sustainable, the carbon footprint, etc. Where someone is interested, the information is there, get it. Very nice. Exactly. Exactly. I think you're the, you're the first to do it. I, I haven't heard anyone. No, there are one or two other companies who, who, who did it also, but on a much smaller scale. Uh, obviously, we sell many more watches and, and some companies did, but I think it will, we are testing it now, you know, with, with, the, uh, with the top time because that product was also firstly available online and um, and we thought it was perfect for a unique piece to launch uh, th this test of uh, of a top time. Um, and yes, people want to have transparency, want to understand uh, how this product was produced and who owned it. Uh, and and with this, you can you can fight gray market, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Oh, we could continue all day. I think you have something to do after me. <laughs> Uh, Josh, thank you very much with all your busy schedule to uh, be... Uh, I hope you like the products, Alex. Uh, honestly, honestly speaking, very much. Very much. You know, I was surprised already when I saw the Chronomat because Chronomat was also part, uh, part of my, uh, let's say, sliding into the industry when I came with my enthusiasm to become journalists and to talk about watches. It was one of the first watches, you know, you were really aware of. And now seeing it back in the way you did it, and I had really the possibility for the pictures to go into details. I like the hands, the dials, everything seems perfect. Yeah, I didn't touch it, but as you showed it on the, on the, on the video with the, with the bracelet, that seems really to be fantastically smoothly. Uh, it's very smooth. Fit. Yeah, this is what you want. You want a smooth product, you want a perfect fit. Uh, uh, chrono, chronographs, I think, if, even if they are discussed, are still very popular. Oh, yeah. that's, that's the same discussion oh, yeah. as people. Why do people buy SUVs? No one needs it, but it's cool to have it. It's the same with a chronograph. No one needs a chronograph unless you cook spaghettis or mm -hmm. uh, your tea. <laughs> it's, it's rare. You're rare using it, but it, it's a very cool product. And what you have, uh, what you have done uh, with, with the ladies, the approach, um, uh, chapeau, uh, as we say in, in French, uh, because it's, it, it's, it's difficult, you know, to find the right way to attack because there are a couple of brands really having a kind of a monopoly on on, on the wrist okay. almost of women. Yeah? 
we have to be honest. If we talk about what Rolex is doing, it's kind of a monopoly they have on the wrist of women. But it's difficult from any angle to attack. But the one you do is good because it's brightling. You're not copying. You stay brightling. And you try to bring in your DNA and to persuade the women to wear yep. the watch, by offering her straps, uh, uh, different, uh, different metals, etc. So it, it's a good way. Why not? Yeah. yeah. Well, let's I, hope I, that all this work will work out and that uh, we'll get out of the crisis very soon. Honestly, For everybody to see it physically. That's that's a, that's a wait. I'm just going back to the pictures of the super ocean. I need to open it quickly again. The one I really like here. It's 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 so cool. Um, you know, the one thing I would like to do is now really uh, go back again here. I have to put I have to put that. Up. Be here. Put one of uh, the super oceans. Wear a nice uh, wear some nice uh, uh, surf shorts and just jump right into the water. <laughs> Yeah, we'll invite you for a surfing session with Skelly Slater if you want. Uh, yes. Okay. I, I, I think I will do it. <laughs> Trash, thank you very much. Let, let, me take away that, let me take away the background. Oh, come on. I'm not, I'm still in my office. Trash, thank you very much. Thanks. Um, thank you for keeping it up and being also so honest about talking um, how, how, how things are uh, these days difficult and uh, yeah. 1,500 people are looking up to you. Keep the good things coming. Thanks, thanks. Thanks, Alex. And uh, all the best to all your viewers and uh, followers. Yeah, stay healthy. That's the most important. You too. Stay healthy. Thank thanks. you very much. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Bye.